Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is a what sold in the month of August. This is September. I wanted to get this done before this month ended, which is tomorrow. So uh, here we are. I wanted to share a brief breakdown of my numbers on both platforms, eBay and Poshmark. And then I'll jump into all my sales that month that were over $40. And let's just jump right in. All right, so eBay, this was a great month and a bad month all at the same time. So eBay, I actually had about half my sales from a few auctions that did really well. Um, if I hadn't had those sales, I would have had a pretty poor month. <laughs> so it, it is what it is. I'm very thankful for those auctions, uh, but my workload on reselling has decreased a little bit the last couple months and for the next couple months because I am working on something that is not related to reselling or YouTube and it's taking up a little bit of my time. So I'm not listing as much. Uh, I still think I'm, I'm able to pay my bills, but um, I, I, do, I did anticipate a little bit of a drop. This month, however, I had $6,725 in eBay sales. I'll get to the details of that in a second. That was for 98 items, which is very low for me for um, that month. And then Poshmark, I had $2,389 in sales. These are gross sales, so I will break it down in a second of once you remove the fees, any shipping or shipping discounts, cost of goods, removing all of that, what's my actual net before taxes. So the total revenue or total business sales for me between both platforms was $9,114. And that was for a total of 175 items. A fantastic average sale price, but the, I, because I had so many outliers from auctions, it's just not even, it's not even worth breaking down. Most of the time, my average sale price is right around that $30 mark. And most of the time, my average cost of goods is right around $5, actually a little less, but I always round up just to keep things simple. All right. When you remove the fees, the shipping, shipping disc, uh, discounts, anything associated with that, <laughs> what I was paid out from these platforms minus my cost of goods was $4,358 on eBay and $1,481 on Poshmark. So my total net profit before taxes was $5,839, which is a decent month for me. Uh, definitely happy with that. I know some people are curious about YouTube numbers, so I've been throwing that in just to be transparent. Um, I didn't have any sponsored content this specific month, so this is just ad revenue. I do not have any Patreon. I do not sell any courses. I do not do anything um, that brings in any extra money besides my ad revenue and an occasional sponsorship. Uh, this month I had $1,711 in ad revenue. That's what YouTube paid me or Google paid me. And that was for five videos on common tags and five videos on city girl unplugged. I know some people like just common tags. Um, I only make a couple hundred dollars on city girl unplugged because it's because it's smaller and the CPM or the rate of payout, um, that I get on that channel is less because it's kind of travel for fun. It's not business related. So if you remove the couple hundred dollars that I got from city girl unplugged, it left me with, uh, about $1,450 for just the common tags channel. I hope that makes sense. So jumping into my top sales and um, eBay definitely had a lot more top sales um, or at least a few more top sales, <laughs> actually a lot more if you can break down all the fringe items. So I had some auctions um, end this month and they were some wardrobe items and then some weird antique photo items. Um, well, one specifically. So just to put all the fringe items together. I found some wardrobe items from the sci-fi show that ended about 10 years ago. I found 11 items. Most of them had wardrobe, wardrobe tags and I put all of them up on auction a few months after I found them. I was actually pretty burnt out on the Gossip Girl stuff. Um, and I also have learned that if I don't share my auctions on, on my videos, that it won't skew my numbers tremendously. Um, as far as watchers and whatnot. Uh, some people still do watch out of curiosity, but I, I chose to just throw these up on auction and just run with it. Um, I had the 11 items sell for a total of $3,339. 
Uh, the lowest price of those 11 items sold for $102, and then the highest price item sold for $699. And uh, without going into great detail, I think about half of them were these jackets that were true wardrobe, unique to the show. They were jackets that had these patches for the fringe team. Uh, some of them had tags, some of them didn't, but all of those sold between about 250 to the 700 mark. And then I had a few items that were wardrobe with tags, but just general clothing items. And most of those sold between about 100 to 200. Uh, so yeah, it was interesting. They all sold very quick, just within that week. And um, it was exciting. It's always exciting to run auctions and see certain items get bid up at the last minute. So I was very happy. None of those cost me more than approximately $5 per item. Um, so definitely a great return on those, but I don't have any more wardrobe. <laughs> so uh, for now, if I find any more wardrobe, this is, my, um, this is my path that works for me. All of these fringe items, I started at about $49 and they all were bid up to the prices they sold for. Could they be worth more? Absolutely. Do I, do I care? No. <laughs> I would rather sell these items in a week, move them, and it's very little effort for me. One thing I did differently with these is I didn't watch the show. I didn't get screenshots. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible and let the market determine the value. And I think for what I paid, it was a fantastic return. So uh, if you have any questions about wardrobe, I'm not a pro and I think every show is different. So I think for me personally, starting on auction, um, is the way to go because I think the market is pretty good at dictating what the value is at that moment. So, uh, all right, moving on. I had a, a weird antique photo album. Actually, my mom found it at a dollar day um, and it was a beautiful actual album that sold for, I, I wanna say it was only about $30, but there were a whole bunch of photos inside. Originally, I priced the, or listed this item as the photo, all the photos and the album just as one. I just wanted to move it. I think I started it at $99 and it didn't sell that week on auction. I did have two people inquire specifically, one asking if I would take 74 for the album. I went to her eBay store and she sells photos, old photos individually. And I, so I knew she would just resell them. And then I had another gentleman ask, inquire about this one specific photo that happened to be when I opened one of the pages of this girl with very long hair and she's brushing it. And when I realized there's a market for individual photos, I thought, well, I'll just pull out some of the better photos. I'll sell the photo album by itself empty. And then I'll list some of these photos. One of them was actually two photos of the same girl with the long hair. He offered me, by the way, the guy who emailed me first $25 and thought it was fair. I found a, a second photo of her just at a different angle. I put them together. I started them at the 25 or whatever he offered and sent him the link and said, I just threw this up on auction. Feel free to bid. Uh, it ended up getting bid up to $170 for two old photos, antique photos. And um, so I'm glad I went that route <laughs> because I made more on those two photos than I would have on the entire album if someone had bought that outright. The, like I said, a few more photos did sell that week on auction, none for that, ex that, that amount, um, and the album sold. So I think at this moment, I'm about $300 in sales from that album, and I still have more that I can lift, list, but I picked out kind of the best ones, and I learned a lot. So I love hard goods because it's just endless learning. But all right, next up was a necklace. The designer was Gerda Lingard. L-Y-N-G-G-A-A-R-D necklace. This is a very chunky necklace. Uh, I've had this listed for probably a year and a half. I threw this up on auction one day and it didn't sell after a couple weeks. So I just threw it up as a buy it now with best offer. I finally got a sale of $124 for this necklace. This actually, I believe came in a thread box a couple years ago. It took me a while to get it listed because I don't really enjoy jewelry. And uh, I thought I listed too high, but it eventually sold. So sometimes those unique pieces do, do need time to get the right buyer. Um, but that was a fantastic return. And I don't think I would ever buy another jewelry box just because I personally don't enjoy the jewelry, but I have had some good items come from them um, from ThreadUp. All right, next up was a $100 sale. And this was a Johnny Wise tunic top. Now this is the only one that I paid up for. This one was from a retail, or not a retail arbitrage, a uh, buy, sell, trade store. Buy, sell, trade stores and consignment stores are slightly different. Consignment stores allow you to consign the item so you get paid once the item sells at their store. A buy, sell, trade store is like Buffalo Exchange, uh, Wasteland, 
uh, I can't think of any at the moment, but those stores that you can take your stuff in, you can either get a credit to shop there or they'll pay you cash. That is a buy, sell or trade store. So those stores, um, I had gone into a couple for a video. If I can remember to link that, I'll link it below. Uh, but I didn't find too many great items. I did find a couple Johnny was, I think they were about 25, 30 a piece. This one actually took quite a while to sell surprisingly. Um, so it took, I want to say four or five months to sell. Uh, but if I only sold for a hundred dollars, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful blue size small, but just a really classic embroidered Johnny wise piece. And I was happy it finally sold. But again, with the pay up that I had on that, um, I probably only profited about 50, um, which is still not bad, but just like to be transparent with that. I think the cost of goods does very much matter in reselling. And like I said, the majority of my items come from the bins or on sale at regular thrift stores. So my average cost of goods is pretty low as a reseller. Um, I also do round up because I account for the fact that there are some damaged items or items that just won't sell eventually and I'll have to redonate. Um, this is coming from someone who's currently purging inventory and trying to remove old stale stuff. So, uh, I do think rounding up with cost of goods is helpful for me and my business model because it kind of accounts for that loss, that business loss. All right. Next up is a pair of flats. The designer is Sarah Jessica Parker, who is from Sex and the City. Um, but this line, the SJP shoe line is very valuable. She uh, also has a line called Bitten, I believe. I do not pick that up. That is... I believe maybe a Kohl's or one of those low, the lower end stores. Not that they don't have cute stuff just for resale. Uh, I haven't had much luck with that. Um, and the comps aren't that great, but the SJP made in Italy shoes, definitely worth picking up. These sold possibly if, if these, any of these sell sales went to a viewer, I don't remember all of them. I do know there were a couple for sure. And this one I believe went to Jennifer. Jennifer, thank you. I hope you're getting some use out of these adorable flats. These were uh, just flat with kind of a black bow on top and uh, really well made and a, a great basic for the closet. So these sold for $80 and all my eBay sales, they pay shipping separately. So, and I'm not including those in these, these sales number. Next up was a jumpsuit. This was by the brand Faithful the Brand, Faithful the Brand. Uh, this was a green jumpsuit. The style was called the Leah and or Lee. And it was a size medium. They, this actually sat for a while. I want to say about nine, nine, 10 months. And it finally sold internationally through global shipping program for $80. And the person sent me an offer saying they had de desperately been wanting to find this exact jumpsuit in their size. Um, and they finally found it. So they were really excited. Next up was another hard good. This was a bins find. Uh, I believe my mom picked it up and uh, gave it to me to list. Uh, this was a Ford Thunderbirds Fab One movie book. It was a cushioned outside of the book. It was from this movie, kind of a collector thing that would have come from if you went to the premiere is what I got in my research. Uh, I found one comp that was that was also with the box, the original box. And I want to say that went for about 150. Mine didn't have the original box and it was in decent condition. Uh, this ended up selling for $79. Also went, uh, I don't know if this went overseas. I think the comp was overseas. This one I think was in, in the States, but $79 plus shipping. Um, yeah, I don't pick up a lot of books. I think this one just stood out because it was a pass, like a light pink. And it was just interesting if you liked this style of Ford um, and this movie. So and it did take a few weeks on auction or it was an auction. It did take a few weeks to sell. It didn't sell immediately. But all right. Next up was an item from a family member. This was a Sony portable DVD player. It came with a bag and all the cords and all that stuff. Just a, a small uh, flip up kind of DVD player that you would maybe give your kid in the back of a car to, to watch on a road trip. Uh, this sold for $64 and yeah, I was very happy about that. <laughs> I, the, they had some decent comps, but I wasn't sure how quickly it would sell and it sold within a couple weeks. So next up was a pair of Allen Edmonds. The shoes were the style of the Interstate 90, which were kind of driving shoes. Um, I only paid about $5 for these. These were a size 14 and men's and they sold for $56. All right, next up was another pair of shoes. This was a pair of hiking shoes by the brand Anu, A-H-N-U. 
This is a brand that's sometimes sold at REI along with other outdoorsy kind of websites, but these sold for $50. They were a women's size 10 and a half and in pretty good condition. Next up was a pair of men's shoes. These I got at the bins and I learned something about this. I, uh, they sold for $49. Um, they were these kind of sandals, kind of sandals, like sandal shoes. Anyways, um, I listed them as size 11 because that's what the size was, but someone sent me a message saying that they noticed it was a 6E. And that is, I believe, the widest style shoe for men, widest size shoe for men. And I didn't notice the 6E. Um, so anyways, I went and changed the listing from, cause he, what he wanted to say was they might sell for a little bit more if you note that, because those are harder to find. And sure enough, once I changed it, it only took a week or two to sell. Um, so like, I think only about a week. So those sold for $49. Again, the brand was Dunham and the style was the St. Johnsbury sandals. So happy about that. Next up was a Torrid jacket. This was called the plaid long line. It was kind of a pink black, uh, had a tie at the waist, really great fall piece in my opinion, fall or spring, just because of the plaid. So I'm not sure if this sold for, uh, for two of you or I, I kind of suspect it did because it sold right after this video went up, uh, but it sold for $48. It was a size four X. And if it did, I hope you're enjoying it. It was definitely an adorable style. The next item was uh, an Adidas like sweater, crop sweater. It was a color block. It had black on one side and white on one side. It probably could have sold for a little bit more, but it did have a faint spot that I had to note. Uh, that sold for $41 pretty quickly within a couple weeks, and it was a size small. Next up, uh, the next four items were all exactly $40 plus shipping. Uh, next up was the Hugo Boss. It was the, the line was the orange line and it was a men's jacket, size 44. Uh, I think it was a gray kind of utility jacket and that sold for $40. Next one was a pair of Birkenstocks. These were interesting because they were actual shoes and uh, the, I found that the style was the Lismore shoes. They were a size eight in women's and they sold for 40 pretty quickly. Next up, uh, I don't know what happened with this one and I should probably reach back out and check in on it, but this was a pair of 511 tactical pants. The style was the strike. I bought these new tags at uh, Deseret Industries. I have that video as well, that thrift with me as well. Uh, the person sent me a message and said they were out of the country, but they packed them, they opened them and there was a cut. I didn't see a cut. I'm usually pretty good at kind of inspecting while taking photos under the light, uh, but it looked like someone had opened a package and sliced a, a small cut in the new with tags pants. Um, I, I don't even try and argue those. I just offer, I, I do full refunds for returned items. And uh, there was some confusion back and forth. She kept saying she was out of the country. And I said, well, feel free to contact eBay and explain the situation and tell them I give you permission to extend the return period because I do allow returns within 30 days. Um, and she sent a message back and it was just kind of back and forth. So I'm not sure on what happened with that. She did, I think, want to try to repair them. Uh, I think these retailed for around $90. So they were a pretty good deal at $40, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't ever share the returns on here. I only get a couple returns each month. It's buyer pays the, sh the return shipping and the shipping to them. So I don't lose any money. Um, it doesn't bother me, but I do, um, I do not offer partial refunds. That's just a personal choice. Um, I do offer full refunds if items are returned and it just works out best for me. So yeah, we'll see. Hopefully uh, either she got them to work or um, maybe she contacted eBay and uh, she may return them. But again, this has been a month and a half since I've heard from her. So, all right, the last one on eBay that was $40 or over was a pair of men's shoes. These were the Cole Haan, the Berkeley sneakers. I don't pick up a lot of Cole Haan, but this style is very classic. I looked them up and it looked like they had some decent comps. Um, these were a size 13 for men's and they did have light signs of wear, which I didn't even bother trying to clean. I just sold them as is and I'm happy with that return. All right, next up is Poshmark. So I had a few sales over $40. First one being a lamb leather jacket by a brand called Mubai. I believe there's my dog. Dog, do you want to say hi? 
Okay, you just want to lay down right here. Uh, I believe she's had a very stressful couple days. I had a gas leak under my house. So any extra money from this month is just going to pay for a repiping. Uh, this is my second slab leak in a year and it's been a stressful couple days. Uh, but that is that is life as a homeowner. It's sometimes these things pop up and uh, my water pipes all were moved up earlier this year and repiped the house. So those should be good for a long time. And now my gas pipes are also gonna be moved up and um, hopefully I won't have any more pipe issues in the future. Always a stressful time, but I think she kind of smelled some of the gas and <laughs> we've been airing out the house, but it's been stressing her out. So she's, she's staying close to me right now. Back to the sales. Uh, this Mubai lamb leather jacket, I found at a regular Goodwill. I wanna say I paid 15 for it. Um, it had all of the zipper pulls covered still in, in paper and, and in tape, like, like it came new out of a box. It also had, I believe, some tags. So it was new with tags. Um, the, the comps were very mixed and I aimed high and I got an offer for $180 and I was so excited. It only took about a month to sell and it was a size eight. Really happy about that. Next up was a, a gown, a strapless gown. And this was by the designer Monique uh luller l-h-u-i-l-l-i-e-r uh very mixed comps for this as well and also a ball gown so i didn't know how long this would take but it was a size 12 designer items like this tend to run a little small so i would probably say it's more closer to like a 10 us um but it sold for 124 dollars, and it only i think it only took about six months to sell which is not bad for a ball gown so Anyways, it was beautiful and uh, I was happy to see that go out. It was taking up a lot of space in my guest room closet. Next up uh, were a really fun pair of shoes I found a couple months ago. And this was a collab between Star Wars and Vans. These were new, uh, new without a re retail tags, but new with some tags. And these I believe went to a viewer as well. Linda, I hope you're getting a lot of use out of these. This was a really fun find and I'm not even a Vans or, or Star Wars person, but I knew when I saw them, definitely worth uh, a full price at a thrift store because they were just so great and so fun. So I hope, I hope you're enjoying them. All right, next up was a Casa de vintage dress that was also new with tags. I bought this at a, a thrift store that was closing and everything was $3. It was this beautiful pastel, I think it had a lace overlay uh, dress, midi dress, absolutely beautiful. I aimed high because the comps were pretty decent and it was new with tags and uh, it took a while to sell, maybe about four or five months to sell, but it finally sold for $90 and I, I just know someone's gonna rock that. It's just absolutely beautiful. So next up was a brand by The Great. Uh, this is this was a midi dress. I don't even think this made it to a haul because it sold so quickly. It was a striped, also kind of a pastel chambray style. It had some flutter uh, cap sleeves. I'm trying to remember because I don't have the picture in front of me, um, but absolutely adorable. It sold for $85 within a day and the great doesn't always sell well for me. I think I've had some jeans listed for a year, but uh, some of the, the more boho style stuff can do fairly well. So I was really happy with that sale. Next up was another vintage item. This was a skirt set by, it, the, it was Oscar de la Renta's line called Miss O. This was a red silk skirt set, kind of almost like you would wear underdress, but you could today wear it kind of as an outfit. Um, absolutely beautiful, had a couple faint spots, but uh, size four, it finally sold for $70 and I was so excited because I found that at the bins and I just, I love, I love picking up really amazing vintage pieces, even though that's not a, a that doesn't happen often for me. I know when I find a great one, I, I usually get pretty excited about it. So next up was a full price sale. This was a smart wool blue base layer. This was a size medium women's and it sold really quick. It sold for $59 full price. And I was really only expecting about 40, 45. So I was very happy with that. All right, next up was a Sunday Citizen white poncho. I think I addressed this in that haul because it sold very quickly before I got the haul done. Uh, but this sold to Vicky. She did a, a, a bundle of a couple items and there was another item from this, this brand, Sunday Citizen, that sold as well, but I think it sold just 
it technically sold the, the month of July, I believe. So this poncho sold, that was white sold for $51.80. It only had that 80 cents because it was part of a bundle. Um, and that was the that was the price for that item. But anyways, it was a one size fits most and super soft material. So Vicki, I hope you're enjoying that. Next up was a designer item from D squared. Hi, this, this sat for a while, but it finally sold for $49. It was, I believe a black blouse with some sequins on the front and I aimed high, but I'm glad I did. Um, it was a size small and it sold for $49. Next up was an anthropology item. I don't sell many anthropology items that are more than $40, but this was a 100% leather suede blue uh, skirt with kind of some buckle details. Uh, this had a faint spot on the back, but I noted it and it still sold for $45, which I was really happy about. The, the line was the Leaf's Daughter line and it was a size six. So um, I was really happy with that. It was a beautiful skirt. Very, very, very heavy. <laughs> So uh, the last two items, I have a pair of Lululemon dance pants. These were black, just their standard dance pants, the straight leg, not the jogger style, uh, size eight. And they also sold in a small bundle. So this, the sale price for this specific item was $41.30. And it didn't sell very, it didn't take very long to sell. So I think it only took about a month to sell. And then the last item took a year and a half to sell. <laughs> it was maybe two years. Uh, it was a, a, a blazer by the, the brand Frame, like Frame Denim. This was a pink striped, absolutely adorable, size four, really liked it, but it just sat forever. It had some interest, but it just never had any offers. And I finally got an offer for $40. And I was like, yes, please take it. I did buy that at a regular thrift store. So, um, you know, probably cost eight or nine dollars, but I liked it. So, that's it for my sales. I need to get back to work and I'm hoping to get this video up today. Um, all is well here. We will probably be back with either a fun haul or a thrift with me soon. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you then. Bye guys. That is so nice. Nope. That lasted two seconds.